introduction into the entire area, personal introduction into the area of psychedelics. And I began making all kinds of modifications, put a methoxy here, up there, change them around, put a methyl group here, hang something on here, put a bromine in, put a methyl group, play around. And it's simple on a blackboard, and people say, well, it's easy to do on the blackboard, you get in the laboratory, it's more difficult. Sure, it's more difficult, perfectly doable, just be patient, sit around, find a way, you'll do it. And so this, this worked out gorgeously. And in general, I found the two oxygens out here, like methylene dioxy is, uh, with, not with a two carbon chain, three carbon chain, is MDA, that MDMA came from this whole route, which has that methylene dioxy group on there. You can put methylene dioxy in a methoxy, you get MMDA, these are things that come directly out of essential oils, such as uh, elamycin, meristocin, and such. And uh, the, then getting, but more than that, mainly the focal point on this particular molecule is this four position. Where it is on that four position calls the type of action you get, but with something in the four position, you get activity. So it's a really a beautiful thing. You take a salt shaker, put a little salt on there, you get this kind of a compound, put a little pepper on there, you get something else. Just modify that four position. With the tryptamine world, it was not quite as clean cut. Initially, then I began finding out, uh, I took oxygen out here, that's, uh, you have serotonin, you have psilocybin or psilocin with oxygen up here, you have bufotenine with oxygen unsubstituted out here. Okay, but the real power is the, what's on the nitrogen. So I began to say settle on a methoxy or an oxygen out that position, a dimethyl, diethyl, dipropyl, diisopropyl, methylpropyl, methyl isopropyl, on and on and on. The alkyl number of alkyl groups are unlimited, and the number of putting them on is unlimited, and the, the, the novelty, the treasure, the, the unique cascade of products that come out from it are absolutely joyful. Uh, joyful to discover, to play with. Uh, whether you have good actions or not, it's another question. But anyway, this is where the tryptamine is, but it's only monosubstituted. You make disubstituted tryptamine over there, activity goes. So again, the, the emphasis is some oxygen <coughs> is, is good or can help, but the activity is on these two groups. In the tetrahydro beta carbolines, these are not as versatile and not as well explored. The one I really got in originally was, was harm, harmaline itself, which is, has a double bond up in here and a methyl group hanging down here and an oxygen over in here, but that, these are, that's another lecture to talk about structures. Uh, harmaline and harmine were the earliest ones I began exploring. Harmaline itself, uh, which is the, uh, the active, or at least one of the major components of many of the plants you've been hearing about for the last two or three days. In my original experiments with, with, uh, beta carb, with that beta carboline, I got the two or three hundred milligrams as what I thought was a pure chemical. And uh, I got into very strange, nauseous, vomiting things. And it's a case of having nauseous and having diarrhea and thanking the Lord they are not quite simultaneous. <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was a difficult experience. But I did try my best to visualize something, and I got my eyes closed, and I came back from the toilet and kept my eyes closed, and I had to go again, came back, and I got eyes, I got a face, I got a, a mouth, I was visualizing a face that's going to be informative, and I got around to the nose, and the nose came in upside down. And there's no way I can identify the person. I gave up the whole thing, went and vomited again, and gave up on beta carbolines as entities unto themselves. As Enzyme inhibitors, of course, their action is legion, and this is an area of very, very extensive research right now that is going on on finding the balance between monamine oxidase inhibition, which are things that prevent the metabolic disposition of compounds otherwise orally inactive, such as DMT, which has been talked about several times in the last two or three days, and making them orally active. Okay, and oh, I was saying about <coughs> harmony, which I thought was pure, it came on a, in a bottle from Merck. An old, old bottle, roughly 1920-something or other, and it was a great big 100-gram bottle of harmaline that I used for all of my uh, uh, early work. I made it available to several other people for clinical studies. And then I got into a, an interesting uh, dialogue with someone in, in Sweden on the purity of these materials, and I looked at that material by mass spec, and it was about 30% harmine. So this is from Merck. It says on the bottle, harmaline hydrochloride with the smells of, of medical authority, and yet it, it's converted, or it is 30% contaminated with harmine. I wrote to Merrick, and I asked what kind of criterion they used back in the 20s to establish identity of materials. They answered a very nice letter saying that they have never offered this commercially, which is a nice answer, but not the answer to my question. And I got no satisfaction from there. I began playing around with it. The argument has been brought out, for example, some of the work by Boo Homestead on some of the old uh, fractions from harmine or harmaline plants, the um, uh, Banisteriopsis group. Uh, suspecting that they may oxidize spontaneously from harmaline to harmine over time, storage, period of time. I can't tell whether my material is contaminated by its being 
50, 75 years old, or whether it is impure to start with. I cannot answer the question. I isolated both and purified both harmine and harmaline, and I put them aside in the same way, and they appear to be stable. Answers, I don't know, but it was a fascinating problem. Some of the published literature uh, on the action of harmaline in clinical trials, I must say, is contaminated because the material, I won't go into who or what, uh, was 20 or 30 percent harmine. I was at fault there. I gave the material to the researchers with the belief that the label was to be believed, and I now will not make that mistake again. Okay, so this gets back to where I want to go. What I think I will do, I'll put up the next one and see if I can jock it on stage and then ignore it for a while. You move to the right and the thing moves to the left. There we are. Well, more or less, that's good enough. Um, I want to get into, actually, the topic of my talk, which I'm about ready to start now. I've made three false starts, and I'll run out of time. I, this happened before I go through a lecture, and by the time I'm about ready to start the lecture, I'm out of time, so I have to... <laughs> oh, uh, I want to talk about psychoactive cacti, possibly, uh, possibly about psychoactive poppies, and the whole area of cactus and poppies immediately brings out often a prejudiced gut response, a sort of a, uh, a, a immediate reply. You hear, read, psychoactive cactus? Oh, sure. Peyote, uh, of course, uh, Trachocerus, that and the other. Uh, contain mescaline. Uh, what else is new? And they drop the whole topic right there. Poppies, psychoactive poppies. Oh, yes, uh, what's the peperacea, what do you call it? Opium. Opium. There's where the active compounds is. What else is new? As if all of cactus could be explained by mescaline, forget the rest, there's nothing else. All the poppies could be explained by opium, forget it, there's nothing else. And this, nothing can be further from the truth. These plants, the, the plant area, the cactacea, are absolutely incredibly loaded, largely with those, I don't I have the examples up there, tetrahydroisoquinolins, dihydroisoquinolins, isoquinolins, quaternary salts of isoquinolins. The poppy world, and not just poppy, you get off into the, in the uh, other uh, the related genera, uh, but all basically in, I, I lumped them together as poppies, uh, are loaded, but they are loaded with different isoquinolins. And what I found in snooping around in the literature, uh, that there is a, an ex extraordinary absence of overlap between the two groups. And here, that caught my fancy. Is, is, in, in the theological sense, are there, are there uh, two gods, a poppy god who made the poppies and a cactus god who made the cactus and they don't talk? Or is it one god had a little omission of, of, of attention for a while and forgot that he put beautiful techniques in one plant, other techniques in the other plant, but never cross-contaminated the techniques? So what I did, and this is exactly where, this is the arrow. This is my arrow. I'm not, the B, people said, what do you want to talk about? What, do you, what have you found out recently? That's B. I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about the arrow. How I'm going to find the B without knowing where or what B is. So I have this thing up here. Aha. Uh, I drew four tetrahydroisoquinolins and four more over here. This is a clutch of eight, which I'm using as my, my template to begin finding out where I am, what's going to happen. Here are the dimethoxy, 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 dimethoxy. The same over here, identical except methylene dioxys in each of the four positions. Uh, here I have these two, yeah, these two positions, there and there, HH, H-methyl, methyl H, methyl methyl. So these are all possible permutations of methylated dimethoxy with its positions being respected. Tetraisoquinolins there, and the exact counterparts over here with a methylene doxy. So what I'm arguing here is, what is the difference in the in the plant world, in the pharmacological world between dimethoxy and methylene doxy with a scattering of methyls? Um, in the phenethylamine, the dimethoxy almost always exceeds the dimethoxy in potency or in activity, or is active whereas the other is not. Uh, 3,4 methylene doxy amphetamine is MDA. The corresponding dimethoxy is 3,4-dimethoxy amphetamine is not active. Uh, in the case of the mescaline-like things, the, the poppy plant very nicely plops a methylene doxies in places of two methoxies, forming lefophorine, for example, out of what would be otherwise mescaline, and you have materials that should be active, but no one's gotten around to explore them yet. The, the unexplored alkaloids in, in the peyote plant alone is a, is a lifetime a search if you really want to get into some fascinating chemistry and totally unknown pharmacology is peyote uh, pharmacologically uh, similar to 
a mescaline, a mescaline to peyote, the studies have never been made. The people who, on which mescaline has been titrated clinically have never been given peyote as a control, and people out in the field who work with peyote have never been given mescaline as a control. Just the comparison of a cactus and the major component of the cactus would be a fabulous clinical study as yet undone. It should be done.